Shalom, beloved. A word. We're going to talk about the two thirds. We know about our enemies. We know about the heat. But many people, I'm getting messages. I'm also seeing things and experiencing things. And I want to address the two thirds. There is a jealousy in some people that is so deadly, so evil, so corrupt that many times what many of us don't understand is that those two thirds target the select, the chosen of the most high and they will do any and everything in their power. I'm not talking about the heathen. The heathen can't get but so close. You know before they do anything where they coming from. I'm going to talk about the two thirds. Those two thirds, as a matter of fact, and some of the behavior. When we read in 2 Timothy and we're in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'm going to start, I'm going to start at the first verse, even though I got it highlighted from the second. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come, dangerous times. Yes, beloved. People, for men shall be lovers of them own selves, of their own selves. I'm hearing so many stories. I'm seeing so many things. I want to add the term jealousy to this because in many cases, many of us are dealing with two thirds because they're in-house. They're not part of that heathenistic group that many people suspect. They're the ones that are on the inside or, or they look like me and you. Like we say, all skin folk and kin folk, all skin folk and kin folk, because um, they're not walking around with your best heart, interest at heart. No, 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 beloved. No, no, no. And all throughout at different points, I have to speak on jealousy because it is rotten to the bone. Just like the word of the Most High says, it is rotten. If you think of a piece of meat, a lot of us can be around somebody that's jealous. And we might quote the word, but we might not truly understand the depths of what rotten is. The word says jealousy is rotten to the bone. It's rotten. If we were consuming a piece of meat and it was rotten, fermenting, uh, filled with all types of uh, vermin. You wouldn't eat it, you wouldn't consume it, you wouldn't want it near you, it's putrid. Okay, got uh, maggots and you wouldn't touch it, you wouldn't want to go near it, but you have individuals spiritually, they are rotten to the bone. They've got jealousy in them, beloved. They've got jealousy towards your accomplishments. They've got jealousy because the most high favors you, even though you go through different things. They've got jealousy because of the way you raised your children. They've got jealousy because you have a good woman. You have a good man. You've got a good job. You got peace. You look like you at peace. Jealousy. Okay. They're covetous. Now understand, dangerous times shall come. For men, people shall be lovers of them own selves. That's why you got all these selfies. You don't, how many pictures do you need to see yourself? I mean, really. Um, covetous. They want what you have. Here's how deep that covetous get. Some people, they don't even want it. They just don't want you to have it. They'd rather destroy it and or you than see you with it covetous. They want your home. They want your car. They want your clothes. They want your children. They don't want you to have it. 
boasters. You have people that brag and brag and brag and brag and brag and brag because they want to sit up here and look down on you. Proud, blasphemers. Right now, let's 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 talk about that blasphemy. You've got a thing that they're saying, um, oh my effing G-O-D. This is something when people curse now. Oh my effing this and oh my effing that. Blasphemers, you hear it all the time. Disobedient to parents. You've got people that are full grown. They want your money, they want to live in your house, but they're unthankful. They want more, more, more. These are perilous times, beloved. Unholy. Unholy. Lie on you to you, use your good words as though they're their words and give their words to you and then run, tell it and lie and bring other people in. I'll back your life, you back my life. We can always do it to that one and get away with it. Okay, unholy. They will go so far as to swear to God and get in front of a lot of people and unholy, knowing their life. These can be brothers and sisters, some sad but true, your own children in some cases. Understand something. Without natural affection, it doesn't matter what happens to you. And we can go back. There's a word, and I'm going to use what is in the Song of Solomon. We're in chapter 8. I'm at verse 6. I'm coming to the back end of it. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. It will take everything from you, including you. The last days, beloved, they got seared contents. It don't matter what happens to you. They, it, it, it's like they're born without a soul. I'm going to the two-thirds right now. I'm going to the two-thirds right now. A young man tried to speak to a young lady, very pretty young lady. And she spoke, but she did not want uh, a relationship or to stand with him in her face, whatever. He breaks a bottle, walks around for a minute, just walks up and jabs this woman in her face, cuts her face. And she runs and gets on the bus. Jealousy is cruel as the grave below. There are women that lie on men, claim they raped them, claim they beat them, claim they did things to them. They never occurred because that man doesn't want to be with her. She might have had four or five kids. She knew the man didn't want to be with her. And that jealousy is so wicked. If I can't have you, nobody can. Although it was already understood. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. I'm just going to talk. Everyday talk. Two-thirds, beloved. Two-thirds. All right. Two-thirds. Two-thirds. Wait a minute, I got the wrong one. I'm going back. Second Timothy, truth breakers, false accusers. They will lie on you. If the lip can move, they're going to tell a lie. I've got people in my family. See, let me tell you something. If you know who your enemy is on the outside, they can't do but so much to you. The one that tries to get close to you, they will set things in motion. Some people, because maybe once upon a time you did drink, but you stopped drinking, but they want to keep talking and talking like you're still drinking. They want to lie on you. False accusers. Maybe you were once on drugs, but you got your life together, but they don't want to see your life together because they are jealous and remember. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave, beloved. I'm talking about two thirds. Okay, unholy, unthankful. When you look at these two thirds and you wonder, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such, turn away. Turn away, beloved, turn away. 
despisers of those that are good. You can be trying to do what's right. This is why I'm doing this right now. And they will do everything to make your right look wrong. They will take your words, claim they're their words, put words in your mouth you never said. A lot of times they their own words. They will copy everything you do hating you. There's something called competition. Some competitions are healthy competitions. But some people that compete with you, they want your full-on destruction, beloved. Because believe it or not, they're jealous. Okay? They're jealous. So in these last days, you have to be aware. When we speak on the Antichrist, because you got a lot of people talking about the antichrist i had it forgive me okay i'm in first john chapter two and i'm going to start i had it forgive me i'm going to go to verse 18 little children it is the last time and as ye have heard that antichrist shall come even now there are many antichrist whereby we know that it is the last time understand something not only do they deny that yeshua came who yeshua is okay yeshua is the word of the most high when they deny the power of it the truth of it okay You have people that will sit with you, pretend to be your friend, to get close to you. Those two thirds, beloved, be careful. All right. The most high is protecting us. But at the same time, you have to pray for wisdom. I'm going to go into the book of Ecclesiasticus. I'm going to start at the eighth verse. Beware of a counselor and know before what need he had. Some people advise you, but the question is why? Are they advising you for your good or for their own good? for your good or for their good, okay? For he will counsel for himself, lest he cast the lot upon thee, okay? And say unto thee, that way is good. And afterward, he stand on the other side. He turns on you. You have people that will advise you to your own destruction. They will advise you to your own destruction and stand back. Watch your destruction come to pass. Remember, jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Somebody is supposed to hear this. And say unto thee, thy way is good. And afterwards, he stand on the other side to see what shall happen, what shall befall you. Consult not with everyone that suspecteth thee and hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. Understand something, beloved. There are people that are jealous of you. Mm -hmm. They envy you. You give them good counsel, they hate you for it. They hate you for it. Pearl before swine, pearl before swine. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. There are people. We'll talk about a particular female, sometimes a particular male. But the person they're speaking to is jealous of them. They're not going to say any good thing. They will even pretend to care about that person only to double back and say some horrible thing to try to destroy their character, to annihilate their character. Beloved, we're going to go down to verse 12. But be continually with a godly man. Be with somebody who is truly of the Lord. 
I'm telling you now, there are people in your family, I'm watching it. They will lie and lie and lie and come back and swear that they didn't tell their own lie. They'll lie on their lie. Their conscience is seared. Their conscience is seared. I love it. But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. And let the counsel of thine own heart stand. Sometimes you got to go by your gut, by what the Lord puts in you. Let the counsel of thy own heart stand, for there is no man more faithful unto thee than it. Your spirit is not going to try to lead you down a dark path below. It's not going to lead you down a dark path. Let the counsel of thine own heart stand, for there is no man more faithful unto you than it. Okay? For a man's mind is sometimes wont to tell him more than seven watchmen that sit above in a high tower. Your mind will protect you. Okay? And above all this, pray to the Most High that he will direct thy way in truth. Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. Yes, my Lord. Yes. We're in the last day. Many times we speak about these heathen, but you got to watch those two thirds. I'm seeing stuff happen and it's not the heathen that's doing it right now that I see. It's those skin folk that ain't real kin folk. That's those two thirds that's still here. We are going home below. We are going home. A lot of people trying to figure out when and how and calculating. And let me say this. When the Lord moves, there is no person on this earth that's going to be able to stop it. I've thought about it, but as it stands right now, the most High did not tell me how it's coming about. I've listened to many scriptures I've listened to many people's ideology of how it's going to happen, but know for certainty it will happen. Right now, we're in the days of Noah. We are in the days of Noah. Yes, we are, beloved. We are in the days of Noah. Noah walked with God. What does that mean? Noah followed what Yahuwah told him to do. Many people, because they go by the world's ideology of what a person who follows Yah is like, should you get angry? If you can help it, no. But if you do, that doesn't mean you're not part of the most high. You got people that sit back, they talk soft, they say words that sound so good, but they got the heart of a snake. They have the spirit of a demon in them. So you can't judge by what the world tells you to judge good and evil by no you have to judge according to what the word of the most high tells you to judge by. And that spirit of discernment. We in the days of Noah. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. I listened to a sister. She put up a thing about human DNA and pigs. They got human DNA in fish right now in salmon. They're also doing genetic modification of food. And the places that they're putting all these things are in the United States right now. Okay, growth hormones, all types of things. One of the things that the Most High tells us is before you eat your food, you are supposed to bless it so that it is acceptable and it serves the purpose he created that food for. So that whatever evil these people put in their food does not affect you. Before you eat, you are supposed to bless your food and give thanks. So that that food serves only the purpose that the most high meant it to. Right now, they're doing DNA splicing. They're doing it on plants. If you remember in the book of Noah, they talked about the earth was corrupt. They were also the animals. They were doing things that were on hold. Every man did whatever was the desire of his heart. Noah found grace because he walked with the most high. He followed what Yahuwah said to do and not to do. 
he honored the word of the most high and he was found grace in the most high's eyes. We're in the last days, but we're not going to be here. We're not going to be here when all hell breaks loose. Yahoo is going to take us out. How he takes us out of this, I don't know. But take us out, he will. The Antichrist are among us now. Now. That spirit. It's in many people. Many people, whether you talk about the false church, whether you talk about different people, beloved. You got people with seer conscience. They are pushing, if you notice, if you watch TV, everything Yahoo had told us not to do, they're pushing. If you get your meat rare, give it to me, rare, medium rare, and you're eating meat with blood in it, you are going against what the Most High told us. Just because you don't eat pork and shellfish doesn't mean you're doing it right. If you're eating your meat rare, medium rare, we're not supposed to eat anything with blood in it, but the world tell you it's okay. Some people get that stuff, steak tartare, where they grind up the meat and eat it raw, okay? You also have people that are marrying outside their own. You have it where uh, they're living like Sodom and Gomorrah. And we're at that stage where they play like wrong is right and right is wrong, okay? But I just wanted to talk to you about the two-thirds. Those two-thirds. The ones who we should all be under the same spirit, one mind, one faith, one Lord. And yet you can have one sister so jealous of the other sister, not because the other sister did something to her, but because one sister made decisions that now as they get older, she's not satisfied with, so she hates her sister and will do everything in her power to bring about her destruction everything feign love for her when there's no love there we're in the last days beloved all right let me say it one more time we are in the book of ecclesiasticus chapter three i'm gonna be at 13th verse and let the counsel of thy own heart stand for there is no man more faithful to you than it see sometimes we go out here looking for advice you might be talking to the two-thirds. You might be talking to the two-thirds. And these people, whoo, my, 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 my. And let me just say, say this, because you're not crazy. There ain't nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. Some of them folks is brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. Some of them are your parent, your mother, your father. A lot of people don't believe. Can a mother be jealous of her daughter? Oh, yes, she can. I mean, horribly so. And that daughter needs to move on and go on about her business. Can a father be jealous of his son? Because this one tried to live according, not just only according to the way the Most High told them. The Most High starts blessing them and they hate that child for it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let's look. look. Can one brother hate another brother? I remember Esau and Jacob. I remember Cain and Abel. I remember Joseph and his brother that nowhere in all those years did their heart repent of what they had done, truly repent. I don't remember reading where they went out searching for him. I don't remember before he was taken away. You got 10 men. Reuben didn't want to let them kill him, but it's like, my God. Of the other nine that were present, nobody? Oh, yes, I'm just listening. Two thirds, you eyes open, baby. Eyes open, eyes open. Two thirds, two thirds. Right now, we got a lot of people because as Yasharel begins to awaken, you got all these other people that suddenly they want to incorporate aspects of what Yasharel says, but they want to bring in this ancestor worship and uh, all these different things that have nothing to do with the word of the most high. Okay, beloved, two thirds. 
Some of those two thirds are following the ways of the other nations and hating you because you won't. And some of them are members of your own family. Some of them are the people you work with. Some of them are your neighbors. Some of them, because the sister look beautiful or the man look handsome, hate your guts. Woo! Mm. I don't believe if that woman had been nice to that man and went with him, I think a horror would have had, he probably would have killed her if they had an argument later on down the line. You got people walking around here. I'm talking about the man that cut that woman's face. She didn't do anything to him except be born, exist, let the Lord create her. You have men in the same situation. We remember what Potiphar's wife did to Joseph. And Potiphar's wife is just an example. We know what the heathen is doing, but I'm telling you now that you have to pray and send up all your requests to the Most High. You have to, beloved, because it is the Lord that keeps us in these last and perilous times, okay? It is the Lord that keeps us in these last and perilous times. I was going to show a couple more um, scripture. Jealousy. The other nations want what Yasharel has and doesn't want to give Yasharel credit for anything. It's so deep now, they'll, they'll turn around and tell you, well, I'm black too. What is that thing called transracial, panracial? It's crazy. But you see, the Lord is going to be separate. Okay? He's going to do some separating. He's going to have the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. So when the separation comes, when we hit that threshing floor, you're not going to be looking. The tares are going to be bound up and burned. Okay? There's a reason why he starts in his own house, why the most high starts in his own house. And if we scarcely make it, we don't really have to stress too much about the other guy because two thirds, he's not gonna leave one of us. So how he does it, mm, he didn't give me all those answers. I'm not gonna feign that, but I know he's coming. Trying to figure out how the Lord's going to do it. He's left some answers for us, but let me say this. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. His ways are not like our ways. As the heavens is above the earth. Can my father, our father, do it? Oh, yes, he did. Above and beyond anything we could ever hope or imagine. Yes. There are antichrists here right now. Many people think it's just this one big being. Okay, you've got the spirit of the antichrist in people moving amongst you, beloved. Moving amongst you. We're in perilous times. Perilous times. And the days of no. This time, though, it won't be water. It's going to be fire, although the water is, is coming in. I just wanted you to be aware that you're not crazy. Many people target the chosen ones. Many people hate the chosen ones. And sadder still, some of those people are from the two-thirds. They are not. I'm not we already know about the heathens. I'm talking about keep your eyes on those two thirds. And to finish, mm, 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 let's go back. I'm in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes, Cuss, chapter three. Chapter three. Starting at the thirteenth verse. And we're going to finish. And let the counsel of thy own heart stand. If your spirit keep telling you something, I don't care how good everything looks, it's all put together. I just had a little demon play games. Okay, try play games. And I'm like, why is she being so nice? 
And when she turned, the whole time I'm like, let me, oh, let me say this. To get close to you, they'll give you gifts. They will give you gifts, look, hand over fist. You don't understand the, 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 the glory, the anointing that the Most High has put on you, okay? They will spend money on you. They will talk sweetly to you. They will go above and beyond to get at you, beloved. But in the end, poison, poison, poison. I watched all the stuff this man said to this woman. And when she tried to go her way, crack the bottle, he cut her face. Poison, jealousy, two thirds. Let me finish. And let the counsel of thine own heart stand, for there is no man more faithful unto you than it. Let your heart tell you. Don't trust them. Listen, I don't care if birds and you know rainbows, butterflies, cupcakes. Mm -mm. If your heart tells you something ain't right, get out of there. And let the counsel of thine own heart stand, for there is no man more faithful unto thee than it. For a man's mind is sometimes want, it wants to tell him more mm, than seven watchmen. You can have seven people around you trying to protect you, and your mind like, watch it. They're like, no, that one's cool. Mm -mm. Your mind like, no, no, no. Well, wait a minute, that's your brother, that's your sister, that's your cousin, that's the one that grew up with you. They work with you, honey. They can't see what the Lord made you see. Mm, mm, mm. Your mind is stronger than seven watchmen and they working in your behalf. But listen, this is what the word says. For a man's mind is sometimes want to tell him more than seven watchmen that sit above in a high tower. And above all this, come on now. This is where we're going to finish because I love this. Woo, woo, woo. I love this. And above all this, pray to the most high that he will direct thy way in truth. In truth, there's that discernment. There's that pure light. Woo, there it is. Come on now. Oh, my, 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 my. Woo. And above all this, pray to the most high that he will direct thy way in truth, beloved. That's your freedom. That's your bright light in a dark place. Yes, beloved. I'm going to finish. I have to find, I was sharing, okay. Above all this prayer, that the most high will direct our path in truth. Because yes, beloved, we are in perilous times, the last days. And many people's eyes are on the heathen and I understand that, but we live in amongst the two thirds. We live in amongst them skin folk that ain't kin folk. You have to watch and pray. Be encouraged, beloved. We're going home. Can I say how? Mm -mm. Can I say who? Mm -hmm. Yahuwah. And he can do it. Oh, yes, he can. He's not a man that he should lie. He can do it. What is impossible for man with Yahuwah? All things are possible. Be encouraged, beloved. Shalom.